nine years. He has served District 46 as an area director, division director for two consecutive terms, club growth director, program quality director, and district director, and then immediate past district director. He served as club coach for Hudson River Toastmasters, which has now been a Golden Gavel Club three years in a row, I believe. Is that correct? and served as a new club mentor and a new club sponsor. Currently Vice President of Education for Hudson River Toastmasters and Club Officer for New York Storytellers. He works as a career sales professional for Saber Tree LLC. He attributes his professional success to the skills he acquired through Toastmasters educational program. And I introduce to you distinguished Toastmaster Tom Reno with a speech entitled Creating a Quality Club. Tom. Thank you, Steve. thank everyone for coming today. I appreciate you listening to me and hopefully we can walk away with something a little more concrete about our club. The title of my speech is called Creating a Quality Club. Sit down, bud. The, the, the second arrow. Point it at the computer. You want to give it any talk? You can see next to this. Oh, there you go. Step one there. <coughs> this is the agenda for the meeting today. We're going to look at member experience, the club foundation, and teamwork. The main objectives of what we're going to walk away with today are threefold. We're going to identify the elements to satisfy the club members. That's critical. What are our members getting from the meetings? We're going to look at, we're going to correlate the moments of truth with the Distinguished Club Program. I think everyone here knows what the Distinguished Club Program is. And we're going to identify leadership roles in our club. Member experience. The Toastmaster Mission Statement. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience. We're all here to learn. We're all here to grow. In which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills. Communication and leadership skills. That's why we're here. That's why I joined Toastmasters to be a better communicator to my clients and to help lead the company that I work for. Resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. This is the essence of a club. Building self-confidence and personal growth. And I, you probably all can relate to a person that actually <coughs> grew in confidence, came into the club, was kind of shy and weak and all of a sudden before your eyes they gain that confidence to become a stronger person. Toastmaster values. Respect. Integrity. Service. And excellence. <laughs> I put them in this form so you can remember it because the acronym spell RISE. Respect, integrity, service, and excellence. That should be a core value in each and every one of your lives amongst other things. I have a few other core values of my life but those four core values are what I live by or do my best to live by. <laughs> I want to share with you a little story. I wasn't born a leader, but they were all around me. In the community, at work, at school, heads of families, coaches of teams, business leaders, mentors, organizational decision makers. I admired these leaders. 
They influenced who I was and who I was becoming. Whatever they did professionally or how they became what they were, I inspired to walk in their footsteps. And so, I committed myself to becoming one. Finally, it came to me. It wasn't just what leaders knew that enabled them to lead. <coughs> they had a voice. They could tell their story. They could listen and answer. They didn't just accomplish, they communicated. So I set out to find my voice. Learn to process, learn to process information on my toes. I needed to learn to listen, learn to give back and accept it. I needed to organize, plan, deliver, follow. But I needed a place where all the ingredients were there and someone would guide me along the way. I found that place. I found a community of learners and the path to leadership. I am a leader now and I was made. This is Cross Westchester. The place where you learn, where you grow, where members grow as a team. That story is in every one of us in some way, shape, or form. Second, Club Foundation. You can see the remnants of a roof and a foundation, the club, the roof, Moments of Truth, the Soffits, Values, the Flooring, and the Club Mission, the Foundation. But this wouldn't be good without some structure in between. First structure, experiential learning. That's what Toastmasters is all about. It's about experiential learning. Coming up in front of this room and making a mistake getting feedback from Joanne and saying, Tom, you know, I liked your speech, but maybe instead of looking at this side of the room, you could have looked at this side of the room. That's experiential learning. Self-paced. I had a member in the club I was in, woman loved Toastmasters. She was four years in the club. Was the secretary and treasurer for four <coughs> years never came in front of the room to give a speech. That's the extreme. I wouldn't recommend that. That's, that's the caricature of self-paced. You go at your own pace. I know people, you can't stop it. You gotta put a rope on them to stop them from giving speeches. Good job. <laughs> Peer review. This is the essence of Toastmasters. There's not a professor in front of the room teaching us and like Dale Carnegie has, they have an instructor who's there and teaches people how to be a better speaker. We don't have that. We have ourselves. And the stronger we become as a club, the stronger each individual member becomes. In mentoring, mentoring is critical. There should be some sort of a formal mentor program in place. I don't care how many members you have people need to have help from other people. Especially with the Pathways program, it's, it tends to be a little bit complicated, but it's not. And with someone that understands it, it helps you walk through it. Mentoring is critical. Moments of truth. <clears throat> There's six bullet points, moments of truth. First impressions. What do people do when they walk in the door? What do they see? Membership orientation. How are your members oriented? How are they understanding the program? Fellowship, variety, and communication. One of the things that I find that's very important, the meetings are critical, the meetings you gain and you grow. What I found is really interesting is the before and after the meetings, that networking, that communication, that talking amongst people. That's the fellowship. 
I find that sometimes is almost, I would say, as important, but it's as critical as the meeting itself. Program planning and meeting organization. See the agenda, everything is organized. That's so critical that you have organization in your meetings. <clears throat> Membership strength, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And recognition. It's so important that you recognize. And Pathways is a way to recognize every, per every person that's enrolled. You can go to the feedback section and say, Stephen, thank you for being Tom's Mass. A really nice introduction for my speech today. I really appreciate it. So you can give that right in Pathways. I have a handout that I'm going to give everyone at the end, and I'm going to challenge the club to do something with that handout. It has all the six moments of truth topics with 36 bullet points for each topic. Here's the Distinguished Club program. There's four parts to it. The education, the membership, the training, and the administration. Very easy to accomplish if all the other things are in place. The current pro well traditional program is the top one. I don't know if you can see that is the top one. But this is the one we need to really focus on is pathways. Because that's where our that's where our organization is heading in the pathways. June 30th is the last day of the traditional program. It will be no more. So you want to make sure we're enrolled in these educational levels and pathways. <clears throat> membership, you always heard that term, four more members, four more members. Training, club officer training, we just finished the first round of training and the second round is coming up for those officers. I got word that we will be starting <coughs> training November 1st for the second round. So that will be something to look forward to. This is Cross Westchester. The club was chartered June 30th, 2003. This is the educational history of this club. The first year, we had one educational award. And that's pretty common. Sometimes you don't get any the first year. Second year, we had done 2005. That would be the third year, according to the charter date. Then we started climbing. And what's happening is the members are working the manuals. Were you a charter member, Tim? No. The members were started working the manuals. And as they worked the manuals and the speeches, you see it went from three to five. But then it dropped after five down to two. And then it went up to four, three, and then in 2012, 2013, two years consecutively, it was, it was one and one. But the members in the club were still working, you were a member of the club then, were still working on the manuals. So the next year, those people working on the manuals went to two. But look at the next year, eight. This is probably when Bruce was involved with coaching the club and people started realizing, understanding things. But after that eight, it went down to one. And it went up to four, one, and last year was one. What this graph is telling me, it's telling me that there's not enough members in the club, long and short. Because once we use up, the members use their advancements, their educational awards, there's nothing to give. So the next year it drops. And then it rises again as people start working, and then it drops. In a club with 20 members, this line would almost be, it probably wouldn't be exactly flat line. It would be up around five, it would be around this area. It might fluctuate a little bit. But when you see these spikes, it's a real high indication that there's not enough members giving educational awards. So you get this, wow, and then a little. But that's the history of this club. Teamwork. The Gestalt approach to teamwork. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Knowing your role. Who in here is a club officer? Knowing your role. Knowing what your role is, what is involved with it. 
that's so important. That comes in the in the Toastmaster Leadership Institute officer training. Know the role of your teammates. I'm the vice president of Steve said, I'm the vice president of education for Hudson River Toastmasters. And I'm working right now on getting two people to assist me so I can focus on the educational goals of the team, of the club members. So I'm going to have someone work on my the mentor program. I'm going to have someone work on the agenda so I don't have to spend time with that. I can focus on helping the members grow as leaders. We saw that self-confidence and personal growth. I'm going to have very shortly, I'm going to have someone be my contest chair person. So I don't have to worry about the contest. I got, what's your name? Aditya. Aditya working. He's going to be my contest chair. Yeah. Now I can still, my job as education vice president is to focus on the member's education. If those educational levels are not occurring, people are not growing. And we saw that slide about the club mission. It's about personal growth. Communicate through areas of strength. I know Steve is a really good organizer. He can put things together, he can piece things together, he can grow a project. So if I have a project I want to do, I'm not going to ask Tim, Tim's going to do that. But Tim, <laughs> but I'll ask Steve, because I know Steve, <clears throat> he's shown me that ability. So I'll ask him to do it. Tim might be his coach, Steve might say to him, Tim, can you take a look at this when it's all done? And put your analytical ideas into it. And that's teamwork. That working from areas of strength. Taking a proactive approach. Looking ahead. Let's see. If we have the meeting in the big room and it's occupied, what do we do? I'm going to make sure that that smaller room is available and we can hook up our equipment. That's what Steve did. He was ready. He looked at a proactive approach. He, we couldn't get the big room because it was taken. But this is working. That's proactive. That's looking ahead and seeing what you can do. Kind of looking over the horizon and taking all your guesses out of the picture. Be willing to cover for another officer. If someone can't do it, if, someone, if your treasurer is having trouble collecting dues, maybe the president can step up and say, where do you need help? I'll help you. No, stay out of this. I don't need your help. But at least you offer it. The executive committee. The president. The president runs the club. Doesn't do the things that need to be done on a day-to-day -day basis, but oversees. Proactively looking to make sure everything is occurring properly. Here's the treasurer. Yes. Steve, have you sent an email out to the members about getting their money in? Not yet, no. No, I'm just saying, that's what the president, <laughs> that's what the president would, be, would do. But the, the president, president wouldn't do that for you unless you asked. Right, right, of course. Thank you. Vice Good. President of Education, we talked a little about responsible for the member growth. Vice President is responsible for the member growth. Are the members learning? One of the things I'm doing right now with uh, my club is um, I have a handout I gave to each member. I want them to fill it out and tell me why they're here, why they, what they want out of the club, so we can adjust the meetings to meet their needs. And also, if it doesn't do anything, it makes them feel good that someone is listening to them. That is so critical for someone to listen to it another member. Vice President of Membership takes guests to come in the room and turns them into members. Tim, thanks for coming today. Really appreciate it. How did you like our meeting? Here's a membership paper. Sign and pay. No, you don't want to do that. I do. Vice President of Public Relations stands on the mountaintop and yells to the community, come to cross Westchester Toastmasters. Be a member, join the fun in any way, shape, or form. Secretary, secretary is a base camp manager, as a backup if we need to go to any of the 
president and vice president of education can't do, especially vice president of education. Secretary is a really critical role in the club because it's doing all the things that need to be done to put that needle and thread and sew it all together like a seam. Treasurer we talked about. Treasurer's job is busy the month of September and busy the month of anyone else? Uh, uh, March? March. March. March, okay. The rest of the time, do you just sit back and sleep? No. That's in June, it's kind of tough when you're taking over as treasurer. I had to make five visits to the bank and get a square. <laughs> and the sergeant arm gets, gets the room set, make sure everything is comfortable. And these, all these roles are so critical that the members see, especially guests see what's happening. These our duties as the executive committee create a club budget. <laughs> develop the success plan how are we going to see ourselves on June 30th 2020 what are we going to look like strategize for the success of the distinguished club program how many what are we going to do to get our educational goals to stop spiking like that complete and oversee other club committees as necessary making sure that the Vice President of Education is doing his job and he's not taking over everything. This concludes creating clubs, quality club. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I do have, can you hand me that folder right there? This one, that folder. I do have a handout I want to give everyone. Best practices for moments of truth. And what I'm going to challenge the executive committee, I know there's only three people here today, but I'm going to challenge the executive committee to pick two of these best practices a month and accomplish them. Especially two that you're not working on right now. Challenge yourself. Pick Do a formal survey on new members learning their needs and provide a follow-up. If, if you're not doing that, pick that and do it. Do I formally recognize member educational achievements at meetings? No. Okay, do that. Practice it for a month and go through this whole 36 and each month pick two different ones that you're not doing and begin to do them in the club. Thank you. I think that's a great suggestion because when you look at all 36, it's kind of overwhelming. If you look at 36 and you find 15 you're not doing, you may not feel so accomplished.